This is a picture of me seven years ago in 2012. I was a foreign correspondent in Jerusalem for NHK, the Japanese public service broadcaster. The man sitting next to me is Mohammed Shehada. I was a bureau chief, and he was one of the six staff I had in my office. We became best friends after spending three wonderful years. Being a correspondent in conflict zone had always been my dream. It was exciting, surprising, confusing, and emotional. But I was not happy when it comes to reporting. How can you not be happy if you are reporting from the place you have dreamed of? Or I was not happy because I knew I was losing something. Somehow by going through the process of scripting, editing, and putting into stuffy new style format, a taste of what was really happening had disappeared. I will give you an example. When Israel started a massive military campaign, military operation in Gaza in November 2012, I tried to speak to as many people as possible. I spoke to one Palestinian mother who had lost her children by Israeli airstrike. She kept asking me why innocent children had to be killed and vowed to fight against Israel to the last drop of her blood. And then I go to the other side to meet Israeli family. They had barely saved their lives by running into bomb shelters when their house was hit by a rocket fired by Hamas, the Palestinian militants. They said they will do whatever it takes to protect their promised land. I was going back and forth every day. It was like an emotional roller coaster. I had plenty of good materials, but it had to be squashed into three minutes news story. So night after night, I ended up including only dry facts, like number of casualties, a government statement, accompanied by oversimplified explanation of why they were fighting. It was like a cooking pizza. I had great ingredients, melting cheese and the best tomato sauce. But by the time the dish had reached my audience in Japan, it had somehow turned into cold pizza. I was frustrated at for not being able to tell a whole story. So are my local staff in Jerusalem. Whenever, whenever I showed my work to my staff, they used to ask me, hey boss, is this what you have come out with? We have arranged, we have arranged all the interviews you requested, and you, we know that you understand the complexity of the issue. And is this all we get? I explained to them about time constraints and necessity of oversimplifying in order to have Japanese audience to understand complicated story from the Middle East. But I knew they were not convinced. How could they be? I was not convinced myself. After returning to my newsroom in Tokyo, I knew I had to come up with better ways of telling news. That feeling only grew stronger over time, and I had finally took my time off and came to Reuters Institute in Oxford. That is when my journey of rediscovering news reporting began. What is the first place you go in the UK when you are looking for new ways of reporting? I went here. This is the BBC Broadcasting House in London. I went to BBC because I wanted to talk to people who produce a news podcast called Beyond Today. It is a program where they talk about one big story, one big question for one big story, for about 20 minutes every day. They do a fantastic job of telling complex news stories in a compelling way. The pizza they cook is still hot when it reaches me. I was welcomed by presenter Matthew Price. Matthew told me about his background, and I found out that he was also a foreign correspondent in Jerusalem. 
just like me. And it got even more interesting when he said to me, I was very frustrated while I was doing TV because I had to put everything into three minutes, cutting out all the details and leaving only dry bones for a story. Well, I had accidentally found someone with the same experience. But not only that, someone who found a solution to his frustration. And then I talked to the editor of the program, John Shields. John teams up with Matthew to produce this podcast. John gave me his advice for good reporting. Important thing to remember, he said, is access. You have to take audience to where they cannot get to by themselves, John said. He gave me an example of the episode they did on Shamim Begum. Shamim Begum, as you all know, is a British girl who went to Syria to join ISIS in 2015 when she was only 15 years old. The British government decided to strip her of citizenship and she is no longer allowed to return to the UK. She's still stuck in the refugee camp in Syria. In their podcast episode, Matthew Price was talking to a BBC reporter, Quentin Somerville, who had interviewed Shamima in Syria. I will now play you a short audio clip from this podcast of Quentin explaining what he became aware of during that interview. I think, Matthew, you are at least five minutes into the interview when there was a squeak from underneath her abaya. And it was only then I realized that Gerard, her newborn baby, was being cradled under her abaya. He was silent for most of the interview. He was only a few days old then. Did you see her baby? I did. I asked her. At the end of the interview, I asked if I could see him. Can I see Gerard? Mm -hmm. So Quentin, the reporter, is talking about the baby whom he, baby whom he realized was there underneath Shamima Zabaya, the long black dress some Muslim, wo Muslim women wear. So in typical news reporting, you broadcast her interview and that's it. And this level of detail details of baby or whether or not the reporter has seen the baby, this level of detail is most often cut out because it might feel it's irrelevant or it doesn't fit in, into your storyline or it just takes too much time. But when I first listened to it, I felt like I was in a small room with Shamim. I was given the access, which adds the emotion and depths that makes the story so colorful. Access with the detail. That's the lesson I learned at BBC. After visiting BBC, I continued my search. I wanted to look beyond media industry to get fresh perspective. So I decided to use my privilege of studying at Oxford. I went to meet Katrina Amrin. Katrina, is a science communication expert based in Oxford. Science communication is a field of study where, in which you explain science to the general public. Katrina gives workshops to people about new scientific findings, which are often complex and difficult. And because I wanted to understand how to tell a complex story in a more compelling way, I thought Katrina might be able to help me. When I asked her in a small coffee shop, what are the things that she keeps in her mind when she gives a, she gives a workshop to general public? She immediately said, gift. You have to give them a gift, Katrina said. She explained that most of the time when she gives a workshop, people are not that interested in science. But when she starts providing useful information and ideas, people start paying attention. So I went to attend one of her workshops and I saw how she gave her audience the gift of identifying fake news and medical science by explaining key steps involved. 
I had never thought of my job as a journalist is to give a gift to audience until now. So I had found two ideas for more powerful storytelling, the idea of access and gift. But I wanted more. So I made one final stretch and flew to Finland. I went to Finland to see something called live journalism. Live journalism, live journalism is a show where journalists present their news reporting on, live on stage. I had never heard of this concept. So I decided to learn this, learn this completely new format of journalism. The show took place in the beautiful National Theater in Helsinki, the capital of Finland. It was organized by a local newspaper, Helsinki Sanomat. Each reporter had 10 minutes to present their story, just like what we're doing right now, telling news stories on stage. What amazed me the most was that this live journalism was so authentic and personal. The stories were not told by faceless humans. On the contrary, I could feel that journalists on stage were nervous giving presentations, as well as sincere. They even showed their personal feelings about the topic they were covering. Instead of just providing you with dry facts, you don't do these things in regular reporting. I felt like they were explaining the issue to me in an intimate pub. I interviewed some of the audience after the show and they felt very much the same. It was about authenticity. One of the reasons why social media is so popular today is that people feel that they can find authenticity there, which they feel is lacking in traditional news format. News is too formal and distant. So be authentic and personal to show that journalists are also human. This is the lesson I learned in Finland. My journey of rediscovering news reporting is certainly not over. I will keep looking for better ways, new ways to present news. But I have already found three key elements to, to take back to my newsroom in Tokyo. Access, gift, and authenticity. When I keep these in mind, I will not have to serve a cold pizza ever again to my audience. Thank you. Thank you.